Since 2012, Rockport Center for the Arts has invited one artist each year to take part in its Artist in Residence program. This year, painter, sculptor, and architect from Little Rock, Arkansas, Jeff Horton, has been tapped to participate, featuring his solo exhibition, Release, Moving Forward. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So we're excited about your uh, exhibition down in Rockport. Starting out, just give us a little bit of your background and um, how you came to be an architect and, and do artwork as well. I grew up always wanting to be or practicing art as a kid. You know, when I got to college, I had to pick a profession to decide on something and I chose architecture because I felt like it would be a profession where I could use my creativity. How would you say that your background as an architect has influenced your artwork and vice versa? Yeah, that's, a, I, you know, I like to tell this story about when I was in college and this kind of that talks to my style and kind of the work that I'm doing now. But there was a painting class that, we, that I was enrolled in. This kind of was when I was doing the dual, I had art studios and architecture studios. And in one of my painting studios, our final project, we had to come up with a topic or something to paint. And I decided maybe I'll try to paint one of my architectural uh, projects at the time. And it was, it was kind of uh, eye-opening. I, I had this vision of maybe I could cre create this three-dimensional space on the campus that could invite viewers into the painting. You know, modern architecture is about t typically the philosophy is about creating order out of chaos, very linear and rectilinear. Uh, it often references restraint as a pillar of design practice. Uh, we've noticed that some of your artwork kind of goes outside that box a little bit um, and um, kind of draws the viewer in to a state of um, chaos, if you will. Would you like to kind of touch on that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So it's it is it's a great point that you picked up on the uh, order out of chaos or i should say chaos out of order and you know when we when i practice architecture there's a lot of constraints um, i have programmatic constraints i have uh, constraints with sites and uh, uh, regulatory constraints so it, it's very con constraining about how to create architecture and so when i get into the art studio I want to be more free. And so the lines and the uh, um, angles and things that are more like architecture in my paintings, I juxtapose those with the chaos or the randomness. And I do that through uh, angles and, and lines that don't necessarily meet up like you would imagine them to meet up in, uh, in an architectural drawing. But I also use drips and I do also some collage work. And so those things that I add, the drips and the collage, are another way to sort of break down that uh, very linear or organized view that, that you see in the paintings. Let's talk a, bit, a little bit about your, the media that you choose. You often paint with um, uh, oils and, and wax, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So the, I use oils for a long time, but recently I've branched out into the, using this cold wax medium. And it's mixed with a little bit of resin and then some um, paint thinners or solvents to kind of get it to a real flowable state. And I add that to the paints and what it does is it gives this transparency and it allows the layers that I create on my canvases to be more prevalent. So I can paint layers, but with the wax, you can see through those layers into the layers beneath them. So I like that aspect that you can see kind of the forward motion, but also the backwards motion of where, you can see where I'm going, but also you can see where I've been. And mm -hmm. so I like to leave traces of where the painting was at a past state because in the end, it's really about the process. So do you mind showing us around a little bit about what you yeah. created in your residency? I'd love to. This piece, the lines are a little more control the, the structure within the painting that creates this perspective. Um, 
I think, you know, I don't know how well the viewers will be able to see this, but there's some mesh that's kind of incorporated into the pane. You can kind of see here. And uh, I created, I added that mesh so you can see these kind of layers. And so there's, and so that, you know, this imagery was based on a kind of, there's a photograph here in this corner. It's based on some, uh, a bridge that's been abandoned now. And so you see kind of the openness of the structure. So the bridge itself had a lot of rust colors and then uh, the sky blues and the dark greens. And so that was translated into the painting. I often do small studies. Um, and this was, a, this is a painting done on paper, uh, just a paper, but there's also some a piece of uh, wire mesh in there. This imagery was based on a, a crane. So I've been doing these sort of wall, I call them wall, 3D wall pieces. And they're made out of mostly balls of wood or uh, pine. And I sometimes paint the pieces, but I also sometimes uh, glue on old parts of past paintings. And then sometimes I have mesh included in them. Every morning I'll take a walk here in Rock Point down by the bay and get these incredible uh, sunrises that's uh, really fantastic. Uh, and what's amazing about the sunrises here on the bay is every day they're different. And so depending on the cloud formations that are out, at, out over the Gulf, the sunrise will uh, affect the water differently every day. So, so my interpretation of these sunrises is that you know the blue piece represents the water, and then the oranges and the reds are kind of the sun. This is another piece that I've been working on uh, here at the residency, um, and it's also kind of represents uh, these my color palette affected by the environment around me. So these kind of these grades represent sort of this, uh, my vision of, or my view of the water on the bay. And so these kind of cool greens, kind of gray greens, and then the light blue uh, and the dark blue. And so the color palettes definitely influenced this painting. Mm -hmm. um, and this piece kind of reflects into the title. So we I've titled the show Release Moving Forward. And so the release part of, of the of the title for the show, and I mean this is getting a little bit technical, but but the the fact that these pieces no longer they they the the angles and the marks in the painting are less tied to the edges of the canvas. And they be, they're becoming more floating. And so mm -hmm. they're becoming a little not tied to any particular piece, but they become kind of uh, a floating in an atmospheric way. And so the release is kind of, that's kind of my idea that as my painting progresses, it's becoming a lot looser and right. it's really into space. Um, and, you know, obviously moving forward is, always, you know, I'm always moving forward in my work. At least I'm trying to so push things, push the boundaries. So. Yeah, I wondered if the um, if the title of your exhibition had much to do with COVID and moving forward beyond that as well. So, no, but that's yeah, great. It, it definitely had multiple meanings for sure. Mm -hmm. And I like how it's positive, you know, moving forward. <laughs> we all move forward. <laughs> For sure. There's there's a three dimensional sculpture that I built on the porch of the mm -hmm. gallery exterior uh, piece, and it's the largest piece that I've made to date. We look forward to seeing your work, and we encourage our audience to get down to Rockport uh, very soon. <laughs>